Good morning out there. It's a beautiful morning and it's so good to come into your homes or wherever you're having coffee this morning. If it's at your workplace, I pray that God is shining his bright light upon your heart and your mind today that you're excited about today. Um, today we know it's very hard. I'm going to look at my notes a little bit because I always write early in the morning uh, with everything that's going on in the world. And over the weekend, I got the chance to go into my camp or just to mow grass and do different things and got to speak into a lot of people. And some of them, not believers, but so many people, uh, what's on their heart and mind is all that's happening around the world. Uh, the continued COVID, of course, and then the riots and the protests and who's right, who's wrong. And so, you know, you might get in on some of that too. And, and I don't know what you think about these critical times in history. I don't know where you feel we're located, uh, even with God. But do you believe everything you hear? Or do you believe the first thing you hear is probably be a better question. Have you ever heard the, the phrase, the squeaky wheel gets the grease? You know what? There's an American, that's an American proverb, but let me say what the dictionary says about this. It says it's used to convey the idea that the most noticeable or the loudest problems are the one most likely to get attention. Used to say someone who complains or causes problem is more likely to, re uh, to receive attention or help than someone who stays quiet and does not cause problems. The last one, only the loudest whiner gets what he wants. Isn't that interesting? So you think about the family, you think about your kids. And in every family, there's quieter ones. There's ones that get a little bit more aggressive. And kids, you know, at times, you ever take them shopping and one gets to screaming and kicking their feet because they don't get what they want. There's lots of emotion and upset, but it gets a lot of attention, not just by the parents in the store, but by everybody around them. And everybody will have a say, even those that are shopping. There's people around saying, why don't they give that kid something to shut it up? And even the parents do that. Parents will, to make it easy on themselves for the moment, it's not the best for the kid, but they'll pick something off the shelf and give it to the kid so that the kid basically is quiet. It usually works for us even as adults. We do the same things. That's the reason why in news today, so many are adamant to get their story out first and most have a motive. Not always good, which we've learned, but we must be aware of it when we're watching and listening to others. There's always two sides to every story. And let me tell you what the Bible says about all of this this morning. Proverbs 18, 17 reads, The one who states his case first seems right until the other comes and examines it. So if you listen to the first case without examining the other side, listening to the other person's story, you're already in the wrong place. That's the reason why in marriage counseling and counseling with troubled families is so important to hear everybody's side. And usually in the mixture of all the voices, you will get something that's stable and something that you can work with. Proverbs 14, 15 also says, the simple believes everything. So are you believing the person that tells you something, everything they say? But the prudent gives thoughts to his steps. They take time. They weigh out their thoughts. A godly person will seek the wisdom of God and not just take things at face value. After all, the disciples, they had to spend three years with God, learning from him, being taught by him. And still the fear of man, when the trial came, when, God was, when Jesus was arrested, they all caved to fear, to what others were saying, and they thought it was, they'd lost their hope, basically. 1 John 4, 1 tells us, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have come, have gone out into the world. Many will see, even in the media today, in, in like people quoting scripture. They're holding up Bibles. They're, they're taking the Bible and reading it and whatever. But the Bible says this, that we are to, in 1 Thessalonians, it says to test everything and to hold fast to what is good. We are to examine the scripture for ourselves to see if the things of this world are right according to God's word, not what man is saying. And not what, you know, a lot of people, even preachers, not every preacher is right. Not every person out there is accurate in all that they're saying. We're to test it for ourselves. 
In 2 Timothy 12, 7, it tells us to think over what has been said, for the Lord will give understanding in everything. So we're to think it over and then weigh it according to the word of God because God gives understanding to everything. There's nothing new under the sun. Proverbs 9, 10 also says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. So it's not what we think, it's what God thinks. You want to know what's right in the world today? Well, you got to go to Scripture. You've got to hear the voice of God in your own prayer closet. So I ask you today, is it man's voice you're hearing? Is it God's voice? God's voice will bring peace. God's voice will give you passion to get up the next day and live for him no matter what's going on in the world. God's voice will bring comfort and love to your heart that goes beyond human understanding. And the Holy Spirit, Jesus went away and he said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. So us believers today, we have the Holy Spirit to bring wisdom, to bring comfort, to guide us into better tomorrows. And so we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be discouraged. We just have to continually look to Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we ask the Holy Spirit to come today. I, I ask him to come into my heart and my life every morning and to reveal to me, I think the greatest thing you can ask for is wisdom. My mom always told us she didn't ask for us as kids. She didn't ask for wealth. She didn't ask for us to be liked. Because you're not always going to be liked by somebody. You, you might not have times where you're poor. But wisdom, the book of Proverbs is full of wisdom. It tells Young men and young women, go after wisdom because it will guide you through life to a better life and towards Christ. So today, I don't know if there's any prayer request, but I believe that God is um, speaking divinely to many in this hour. And uh, I know there's many needs out there. There's many hurts, many pains, many worries. But I know that God can settle our hearts and God can do a great work today to move us towards better tomorrows if we just incline our ear and we say like Isaiah, here I am, Lord, use me today. So is there anything, guys, this morning that you can think of? There's no prayer request. We're really doing good or people just aren't reaching out to us, <laughs> one or the other. And I say that sort of comical, guys. Um, you know, there has, there's many that come in every day to me, of course, and um, I know Raymond Powder's uh, brother-in-law, as cancer, he just did a Zoom prayer meeting. I didn't get a chance to get in on that, but I know, uh, and his uh, niece, Amelia, she's been sick as well. And um, there's people out there with marriage trouble. I know uh, different people that have lost loved ones lately. Many needs within our own congregation. I'm sure you, you know, whoever's watching out there today, there's needs that you have too. So let's just bow our hearts, ask Christ to come by the power of his spirit and just heal wounds and heal people in whatever way is necessary today. Father God, we thank you for who you are, and we thank you that the Bible is full of wisdom. God, it's the, the words of life. It's Jesus. Every word reveals Jesus Christ to us in that book. And so, Father God, we ask that you would come by your Spirit and reveal Jesus to the world once again in a greater way, God. I pray, Lord, that you will come by your power and you will redirect us. If we're wrong in our thinking, God, would you redirect us? Would you help us along life's journey? Would you keep us in the center of the road, not to the right, not to the left, not listening to the loudest voice out there, but listening to that still small voice of the Holy Spirit in our prayer closet that says, walk this way. And Father God, we can't go wrong with you. God, we can't do it for the wrong reason either. We have to do it for the right reason because we're in love with Jesus Christ. We love the fact that you sent your son to die for us, that we might have life and have life abundantly. And when we believe that, we go towards it, we go after it, God, and our passion prevails within our hearts no matter how bleak the world seems. And so, God, today for everybody watching, Father, you're, a, you're the great I am. You're the God of the universe. You're the creator of the universe. And we think so small about you, but I pray you will enlarge our thoughts towards you. You will reveal yourself in greater ways so that people will be amazed at you 
today in their own homes, in their own lives. They will look for you and you will be found by them, God, in such a beautiful way that they will be amazed by life and not discouraged by life. And so, God, today, would you just come in a way that's simple to us that we can understand that we're a simple people? And, God, you would come and just display once again the power of your word in our lives, the power and the might of that word to be able to heal us. You sent your word, the Bible says, to heal them. So God, I send your word into every home this morning and say, be healed in Jesus' name. Whatever that looks like, whether it's physical, emotional, it's spiritual, God, I pray healing today. God, we need to see the power of God moving, Lord, so that we might know you're still alive in our lives, still alive in this world, still doing a great work all around the world today. And for that, we give you thanks. So God, now I just pray that this day will honor you. Not that we'll be honored in the day, but that you will be honored by who we are. God, infuse in us, once again, by the Spirit, the power of the living God to live this out triumphantly, victoriously, with great passion, great purpose, Lord. May your kingdom come and your will be done today. In Jesus' name, amen. May you be blessed today. And you know what? On Sunday, I'm going to be speaking again, not just on this subject, but a little bit more about how to keep going. And if you want to, uh, I believe it's a message from God. I pray you'll tune in, you'll listen to it, and just keep yourself built up in the Word of God, folks. And we're going to see much better days. God is coming to do a great work.